On behalf of the Scottish Co-Production Network, I've come to the very top of Scottish Government to find out how seriously the government's taking co-production in Scotland. Co-production can be a bit of a buzzword. What does it really mean? A completely different way of thinking about the relationship between government and individuals and communities. So instead of public services defined by professionals and consumed by service users, listening to the communities who have the experience of these issues and seeking with them to say, well, how best would we move this forward? And I think that human empathy and spirit is at the heart of co-production. That's what it's about. Yep. It's once you provide uh, communities with the power to make decisions. So how does co-production fit in with the bigger picture of Scottish Government? It only really counts for anything if it's part of a wider strategy to tackle inequalities in society. And then being willing to learn from small instances and small engagements all the time. It's like a sewing machine. We'll develop understandings, sort of make this fabric uh, together of what co-production actually amounts to. And what do you think is really needed to help embed co-production right across Scotland's public services so that this becomes part of the way that we work? What's embodied in every public service is a relationship between an individual, a family uh, and a provider. And that is a basic point about mutuality and respect. So if you build your public services upwards from that kind of DNA, from that kind of structure, it seems to me that you're most likely to get the best outcome. Critics say that co-production can just be a fig leaf for cuts in public spending. Cuts in public services, the whole austerity agenda, are a fact. It's important that we face that squarely. But if, if co-production, if all that was, was a fig leaf, then you wouldn't see uh, communities, individuals, service users, organisations advocating that approach saying to government that's what they want. Can you put your finger on what makes co-production different from the conventional way of how we deliver services? The traditional way of approaching this would be that the professional knows best, but co-production actually puts on an equal footing service users and organisations and involves those bodies with public service providers jointly exploring the best solution and the best means of delivering it. To make co-production happen, can we just flick a switch and all of a sudden people start doing with instead of doing to? Well, you can, but flicking that switch won't make it happen. I have never seen, never found that to be easy. It's new stuff. So get in, listen to what people are saying and be willing yourselves to be critics of your own, in a constructive way, mm -hmm. critics of your own practice. Um, some of our Members of the Scottish Co-Production Network tell us that a barrier is that, that some people, you know, at an agency level are often reluctant to give up that power and control around how services are delivered. I guess people will come across situations as service users and as communities where they don't feel that their interests have been properly taken into account, that they're not getting a voice, that we're miles away from any idea of co-production. We live in a culture of accountability. And we can't make that go away. I think there are two things we do. Uh, one is to actually have a, a real dialogue with the communities, the services, the organisations involved about actually what kinds of empowerment would really make a difference in those spaces. Second, the importance of actually talking with the regulators, the bodies who are holding to account. I think we need to make more effort to bring these ideas into uh, the regulatory environment. Further practical challenge uh, for co-production comes from the procurement of public services. The important thing, I think, in the procurement world is to actually start to understand how co-production approaches can be set within a procurement framework. Another thing that our members say to us is that quite often some of the, the reluctance to engage in co-production activity in terms of resourcing it is around the feeling that there's just not enough evidence to be able to convince people that investing resource in this kind of work will actually lead to the kind of outcomes that we seek. Well, quite a bit of this would go to the question of whether we're satisfied with the progress that we're making thus far. Um, the deal, if you like, that people uh, with relatively low incomes living in poor environments often, are getting from society as a whole. Are we satisfied? I think everybody would say, no, we're not. So if you've got people saying, we like this, we support it, this has given people confidence. We've seen people in our community finding a new voice 
then that for me is evidence of success. How do citizens and communities get what they need to give them the resources to be able to co-produce effectively? There's no doubt that particularly communities, individuals, families under pressure don't have the opportunities and the resources that are available to other people. That's where community-based organisations and networks, I think, come into their own, both in terms of advocacy and creating platforms. But face facts, this is also about providing resources to enable that to happen. It's really important that we do that and get a 21st century view about actually what community work, community empowerment, community development means in our modern society. Are there things that we need to put in place and that actually support a culture mm. change towards a co-productive way of working? One of the big advances in Scotland in recent times, without a shadow of a doubt, has been stronger alignment between public service organisations in better dialogue with themselves and with the government. But that's not co-production. It goes much further. So you have to have empowered frontline workers. You cannot run a co-production system that requires notes to be passed up the system, which three weeks later come back to uh, the front line with a yes, no or a maybe. You've got to have an empowered workforce who can take decisions and make them stick. And this comes from a fundamental belief, really, that workforces have within them tremendous potential for empathy and innovation and engagement. So we put our public service workforce right at the heart of uh, co-production. Networks such like your own are engaging across Scotland with a whole range of public bodies to bring your intelligence to the table because we only, we'll see best how this looks from a government point of view. There will be very important knowledge understanding from uh, communities and interest groups that need to come into the uh, dialogue. And you know, engagements of the type I've had with your uh, network have really accelerated my learning and understanding about all of that. So what's the big message you want people to take away from this conversation? We need to get better at telling this story and why it's important and why it works. For me, it's about the relationship between public service providers and the individuals, families and communities they serve, making the best of what's available together and being persistent. So this isn't a flavour that we do in 2015. Further to go, of course, but this has become an absolutely fundamental, the, probably the core part of the Scottish approach to public services. Mm -hmm.